Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime, and yes, that's right, another video today, because we have a, a story that's making its rounds that I feel like is worth talking about, uh, and talking about, I feel like, in the correct context, because we have to note who is saying this, and obviously deal with, you know, the reality of what the situation could be, even though that situation hasn't been how Nintendo has traditionally handled things in the past. And what are we talking about? The idea that Breath of the Wild 2's footage from last year, let alone the new clip they showed this year with the Master Sword and all that, uh, that that footage looks beyond the current Switch's capabilities, and not just because, oh my gosh, it's higher resolution. We all noted that, that it looks sharper and prettier, and I mentioned that in a prior video, but because of the type of stuff they're doing with the clouds, which is rarely done on Switch because it's so taxing on hardware, and they're not only doing that, apparently there is amazing anti-aliasing at work. Now, now again, this could just be rendered by a computer, but why is this coming up now? Why, you know, that trailer was released last year. What's the big deal? Why is this even a conversation point at the moment? Well, that's because Digital Foundry finally dug into that footage last year and the new footage this year, and they are blown away. Now, we're going to read this off GameSpot, so... Um, you know, credit to that. We'll also link to the original Digital Foundry video on this as well. Um, and here's what it says on GameSpot. Some gaming tech experts think that recently, game, the recent gameplay footage of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 might look a little too good for the Nintendo Switch's hardware. In an episode of Digital Foundry Weekly right here, uh, which regularly provides information, informative tech breakdowns on video game performance across multiple systems spotted by Games Radar. They're the ones that, that spotted the segment. Uh, Digital Foundry members... Richard Ledbetter, John Linneman, and Alex Bataglia. And again, if I butchered any of your guys' names, I do apologize. I'm really bad at enunciating and pronouncing things. I just, I know it's weird. I'm a YouTuber and I'm bad at that stuff. That's just the way it is. Um, they analyzed the latest trailer for Nintendo's Breath of the Wild 2. Beyond a detailed look at how the game incorporates various technologies to make the gameplay more vibrant and sharper than its predecessor, the group began to doubt if the Nintendo Switch can even handle the updated graphics. As Bottega pointed out, volumetric clouds on Switch are rarely seen and perfect anti-aliasing. Perfect! We're not, we're not talking about like some, you know, partial perfect, like pixel perfect anti-aliasing is present in the footage. And that is something even the Xbox Series X struggles with. Also seem to point that the sequel may be running a more powerful hardware version of Nintendo's hybrid console. As the group noted, this could also be the case of Nintendo simply rendering gameplay to look as good as possible for that particular trailer, which I did mention. It could have just rendered it on a computer. Lots of companies do it. Nintendo doesn't usually do it, though, and they note that here, where they, where they say, although the company, Nintendo, rarely does that and prefers to show an accurate representation of how its games run on actual Switch hardware, which, again, that's Nintendo's history. They tend to not tease you with something that's unrealistic to what the final product's going to be, at least in terms of visual quality. It wouldn't surprise me in terms of what the game is all about. I generally think that since they are delaying it now, I think that this is going to be the equivalent to what we saw with Breath of the Wild, where it launches on the old and also on the new, in terms of hardware, is referencing uh, the simultaneous release on Wii U and Switch with the original Breath of the Wild. And then it goes into, these are the current um, models of Switch, the hybrids, uh, the OLED, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, a number of reports concerning the existence of the console in terms of the Switch Pro have existed over the years, including one report that has it to be revealed at last year's E3. So I guess the idea is that Switch Pro could be coming out with this game next year, or maybe the Switch Pro comes out this holiday and the game comes out for it later. Obviously, the entire speculation here is that this game looks too good, has volumetric clouds, which just are extremely taxing, and the Switch has not been able to handle it very well in games that have attempted to do it in the past, and somehow is perfect anti-aliasing, and they actually note, which isn't here, but has been noted by many others, that it was running at a higher resolution than the original Breath of the Wild, which is a little bit insane to think about when you're adding perfect anti-aliasing and volumetric clouds, which the original Breath of the Wild doesn't have. Um, quite interesting indeed. So, obviously, whenever you talk about a topic like this, some people get really, really excited because you begin to expect Nintendo to drop a Switch Pro, right? Or the new Nintendo Switch, whatever you want to call it. It doesn't really matter what you call it. People just get excited about the prospect of a brand new Switch. And obviously, then you have all these people that will be upset about this because they're so tired of hearing that a Switch Pro is coming. There were so many, like, legitimate 
um, sources talking about this last year, really all stemming from Takahashi Machizuki, but beyond him, other journalists, Tom Phillips and Jeff Grubb and so many other big name people talking about this platform that exists, that developers are making games for now, that they want to come out at ASAP, but Nintendo kind of is fumbling around and deciding when they want to talk about it, when they want to announce it. And then obviously, you know, we had infamously, this gets pinned on Takahashi Machizuki a lot. It wasn't really him. He did say that developers were pressuring Nintendo to unveil it around E3 last year. He didn't say that it would be unveiled. But Nate the Hate, Nate Dre, you guys know the man, the myth, the legend, the guy with the podcast, with Modern Vintage Gamer. He's part of Spawncast as well. He's the one that put out there that they were about to imminently announce it right before E3. Um, and then literally within 24 hours was trying to backtrack what he said. So, you know, take that for what it is. Um, that's just a, a, a messy situation. And it created a mess for obviously for content creators as well, uh, who we've been covering it the whole time. And obviously for our sake, it would have been best for it to come out when all these reports said it did. Uh, but, you know, we're just the bearers of information and then providing our opinions and thoughts on it. We're not the sources. I do not provide direct source information because I don't have direct sources. All of my stuff is secondhand information that I'm bringing to you guys, third hand, et cetera, that I am bringing to you guys. So in this case, this is just, you know, looking at that footage of Zelda and kind of coming to the conclusion, huh, you know what? There's not a game on Switch doing that. You know what? Yeah, there's games with anti-aliasing, but not this great of anti-aliasing. You know, there's games that, that that tried volumetric clouds on Switch, but man, all of them like can't even hit like 20 FPS consistently. Huh, that's probably why all the other games got rid of volumetric clouds. Why is there volumetric clouds? Well, because they look really damn good, especially when you're playing up in the clouds. Huh. Well, volumetric clouds are extremely taxing on the GPU. You know, anti-aliasing is extremely taxing on the CPU. Hmm. Feels like things the Switch is incapable of today. Doesn't mean it won't be on the Switch. But it could mean they're trying to present the best version of the game, and that could be on new hardware. And that is worth speculating and talking about because it is notable. So, that being said, I am Nathaniel Rumpeljance from Nintendo Prime. We are on our road to 80,000 subscribers, and if you made it this far in the video, I assume you are really enjoying the content and the conversation. So why don't you drop a like and leave a comment, and maybe subscribe. You know, if you want, you don't have to, no pressure, but I would appreciate if you would. Um, otherwise, you know what, folks? I am just going to catch you in the next video tomorrow. I, I swear, this is the last one today.